Hey there everyone, this is the camera guy for the Virtual Thunderbirds. We flew a live show at the Virtual International Air Festival on December 10th, 2022. This event spanned two days and was filled with 26 hours of solo and team performances from all around the globe. Our team was selected to headline the first day of the show. We knew our style of stream would take a lot of people by surprise, and based on the chat that day, there were a few things that made me want to make this video. First, because quite a few people in the live chat asked for it. Second, because others couldn't understand how it was being done live. And lastly, because, well, we think it's possible for really anybody to do this if they know where to start. So, you see, I love the virtual air show genre, and it's in everyone's best interest to put on the best show possible. It helps to grow the community, and let's face it, 26 hours of streaming can get really stale unless, you know, teams step up and turn it into a show. So I hope this behind-the-scenes video um, will help some guys find their way. Uh, by the time we went live at 7 p.m. Eastern in the U.S., it was already about 2 a.m. in uh, the VF headquarters. Uh, it was in Switzerland. Uh, the the on camera staff I can't remember their names right now. They were they were tired and just a little well. They felt like they were a little unwelcoming. Um, it's understandable though. They they had been going for just over 12 hours straight with really no breaks. When I say those guys are my I might I am talking about the team flying the mighty F16. Yes. Which team can it be? Mm. Hold on. So. It's on the other side of the sea, and it's an F-16. I have literally no clue what you're talking Maybe about. they are blue. No, they are no. not blue. We saw blue It's plate like a, a bird. Yeah, a bird and uh, flying into a thunder. No, it's rain. No, it's rain. Yes. Oh, it's so raining it's ra The rain ducks. Uh, thunder bees. Uh, I, I, I don't know who does the camera for the Thunderbirds. Oh, that's a good question, actually. I can't remember. Some, a guy from them, I believe. So, the reason I mention it, it's to uh, highlight how your very best efforts can swing the tide. So by the time we were done, the uh, VIF camera targets changed their tune. It seemed like they really, genuinely enjoyed the show, and, and they said so. This is it, boys. This is the end of day one, but this is the end of their demonstration. One hour of a, truth of choice. Absolutely noise. incredible. The production was outstanding. I mean, I, I, I cannot even imagine how, uh, how much work was put into this. The intro, the many, many, many scenes, the music, the uh, you know, second precise cast. But really I think the guy behind the scene is an octopus with eight mm, hands that like this with his scenes. So a side note to go along with that as well. One of my really good friends, Moto, he was watching the show at home with his girlfriend in Shelbyville, Illinois. She's not at all into things like this. But at the end of it, she said to him, Wow, that was really cool. We have to go see the real team live next summer. And then she started researching to see where and when the real team was flying. That says a lot. And then also, and this is my absolute favorite comment of all time. It came from a really seasoned veteran, a Brit. And he said, and I quote, I'm not even an American, but this makes me proud to be an American. Well, now, recruit, retain, and inspire. That's the mission. Everything else is just clutter. Stand by the break. Let's break ready down. Break ready down. Break ready down. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Thunderbirds, check. Three. Four, five, six. Start one, ready now. Genevieve's down, ready now. Throttle idle ready now. 
VAF uh, 2022, this is the, the center. Um, I'll go into a lot more detail later. Main screen with the stream, uh, sound, communications, team speak. This is Lenny, which runs the 6th jet. <clears throat> this is Spock, which runs the 5 jet. This is Raj, who runs both the 4 a GoPro cam and also show center. Um, on this monitor here, I'm seeing all the different camera views. Um, alone above it, I'm seeing the POV views. Um, eight's not up yet, and two's not up yet, but they will be shortly. Um, I'm using a physical soundboard. This keypad is running that machine out there, which is the drone. These three keypads are running zooms and maps. For certain machines. Um, this is one stream deck which is all the graphics. This is another stream deck which is all the camera views and we'll go into detail with those later. So there's a lot happening here. In the other room, out in the main room, uh, this machine is just a drone view and um, it's using, um, <laughs> you can see this cable strung up over the thing, that's how I can control the zoom. Kind of silly but it's fun. It is what it is goes to that keypad and then this laptop here is running uh, it's just a listener in our team speak which is being fed by uh by shooter in texas she's using something called v-band from one um a voice meter which goes over the network when it closes over the network and comes into the soundboard on v-band here and he's got his own slider Looks like the whole team's here. We're getting ready to run our practice. And in honor of the high alpha, we're straight out of EHT. <laughs> so, and then up top, we've got the cave cam, which is up there filming me right now. And then the one below it is just video recording. So that's, that's the setup. It's a lot going on here. So it's uh, six machines on this end. Shooter's got two or three, I think. Uh, Cujo's got three machines running. And everybody else is flying their VR rigs. So have a good show, y'all. All right, this is going to be a, generally a stream, how the stream is set up um, internally. Uh, the scenes, uh, what they point to, um, things like that. I think the yeah, mouse cursor is visible, so that, that'll help. And I think I can, yeah, I can highlight things like this. So um, trying, to, trying to do this not in a live environment is insanely more difficult, actually, because all of them... DCS machines that were used to record this show right now are just in the track file from the machine that recorded it, but paused. And they're, they're, they're not at the same times or anything like that. So it's not synchronized, and they're just sitting still um, at the moment. Um, so what I wanted to do is kind of go through the, the, uh, the general uh, layout and planning. Um, and the first couple scenes in uh, your stream streamlabs obs or even obs studio it's where they really function very much the same way uh, in fact i would probably recommend obs studio because it's lighter weight uh, uses fewer resources and um honestly it just doesn't crash really that much if ever this thing um streamlabs can be uh, a little problematic and most importantly um they do force updates on you, so if there's an update, it just will update. And my experience with that has been um, unfortunate, where sometimes it causes um, things to not work anymore, and you have to you have to fix things. So if that happens before a show, well, you know, oops, that's a like you're logging in to go to a show, you reboot everything, and the damn thing goes into an update, um, and it breaks things. It's that's a terrible terrible idea so anyway all right so it helps also to have a machine with multi monitors now first thing I would normally do is I would set this to a, 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 a scene projector you right click on that scene create a scene projector and you tell it which monitor you want to throw this scene onto and for me it's the um, the widescreen monitor to my left and I'll show you that here in another video and then my monitor's POV is a different um, scene that I use. And this is the POV views that are coming in through OBS Ninja. Um, 
from uh, from various sources, from two, from three, from five, from six, and from eight, which is the narrator in the center. So I'm going to create a scene projector for that and throw that on monitor four, which is above the main monitor. And just scroll there, boom, and four. All right, so those are up on the screen. So this, uh, when when the guys are guys and girl are logged in and sending me their feeds, I can real time. I can see up on my left side monitor if their feeds are um, acting up or if they're there or at all or if they've dropped offline. You know, and I can adjust what I'm doing in in the live stream. All right. So then, so keep that in mind. Those are the monitors. That's just for your SA uh, situation awareness uh, as the streamer because you're managing. Um, five different DCS machines. Um, so, and we'll go through those really quickly. So, the main machine. Um, this is the DCS rig, or the DCS instance that's on the same machine as I'm streaming on. So that's the main rig. Then to my left is a machine we call Spock, and it's locked on to five there. Um, so five Spock. Um, actually, you know what? Well. Okay, sorry. So this is the main camera. <clears throat> this is 5, or the Spock cam. And you can see on the left side here in Stream Deck, in Stream Labs, it's switching to the scene, so you can see it happening. Um, this is the Lenny cam, which is locked on the Panther's Jet, which is a laptop off to my right. This is the drone cam, which is in another room and is controlled by a keypad with um, you know, a couple USB cables tied together, literally. Just linked together and strung up over furniture and through a doorway. You got the idea. And then the Raj Cam, which is my flying rig, um, which is doubling as the um, F4 view for the um, on the Ford Jet and also Show Center. And then it locks onto the, I lock onto the Ford Jet um, for for following the high bombers cross. Okay, the rest of the main camera views um, are generally variations of everything else. Split screens um, with five and six, um, and then six and five, five and one, six and one, and one and six. All right, um, those are the ones that are being used. I'm going to go into all the other views, um, these guys over here, uh, and what they do. Let me get focus. Why isn't that working? Oh, that's, well, my mouse is no longer making the thing it's supposed to make. Doesn't matter. Um, right, so those are the main camera views. Then there's all the variations of them and how and why the icons are the way they are. We're going to get into all that in just a minute. But I think um, it's more important to talk about the general build here. Okay, so I'm going to switch back over to the pit and then drill down into the show. Here we go. Okay, so what you're looking at now are the graphics. All right, so um, whenever you see a graphic in a black circle, in white lettering like you do, those are diamond maneuvers, and then you see them in blue. A little hard to see the way they come up. They look very different on, on the actual stream deck than they do um, on, on the um, screen here to what you're seeing, and that just has to do with brightness and things like that. Um, the ones in blue are the solo maneuvers, and it also will tell you uh, where they're coming from. You see the little dot, all right? So crossover break is the, this one here, <coughs> and it's coming from behind. Um, and then diamond purr, like that, and then um, you'll see the K's knife edge, and then you'll see a six in parentheses. And the reason that's there is because machines break lock. Um, it happens if num lock comes offline, you know, and it can happen very easily, and you, you won't know it happens until it's too late. So when I see the knife edge six, I just fire that graphic, and it reminds me to go to the camera that is the picture in picture for six, and also the external view of six, which is on the other stream deck. Right, so out of all these, I'm just going to keep firing this graphic in different views. You see how it's still moving? It's still animating through any view that I'm in. All right, and the same thing exists for the 8. If you see right here, you'll see the spinny thing. That's because 8's not sending me a feed, 
right? The the uh, monitor POV that's eight speed right there, um, and in um, six picture in picture, the knife edge pass graphics is hot, and you see his feed, but his feed's not there at the moment, so it's just blank. All right, well, how does all that work? You know, how we how are we getting all the graphics and all of the audio um, in the scene at the same time? Well, the, the key to that is building separate scenes. This is B1, all right? And if you're familiar with voice meter, all right, um, voice meter has the ability for you to, let's say, bring in DC, DCS world comes in and you could put by using cables. So I have it all split out where it's DCS, TeamSpeak volume, um, Discord listener, Discord windows, my microphone that you're hearing right now, um, general windows, uh, Chrome web browser, and shooters feed through VBand, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, A1 is what I hear in my headset, and A2 is what I hear on the speakers outside. All right, so that's um, voice meter is really kind of critical to to making any of this really work um, with any success. So now, in order to hear the show, generally speaking, what I will do is I'll turn off um, the X the my headset volume for the DCS. Um, feed. So I'm only hearing it on speakers, which I can hear outside my headset rather well, um, but it's not crushing in my ears. And normally, depending on what we're doing, you know, I, I'm adjusting this. And I'm not doing it with my mouse. I have a, um, a physical mi a mixing board that is linked up with these through MIDI. And that's what I'm actually using to, um, to adjust sound. So run, running GTS, DCS just a little bit below center, TeamSpeak right at center, and Shooter is also right at center um, where you see it. All right, so now if you'll notice, every one of these goes to B1. All right, so this is what's hot on stream. If I want to turn off the comms, you know, B1 goes on and off. Uh, it's here. So when that's hot, um, on my mixing board, it lights up in red. Um, when it's cold, they're not, so you're not going to hear the comps, stuff like that. Um, any any one of these does the same thing. So my mic right now, you'll see B1 is hot, which is why it's coming off. Turn it off. I just clicked so you can hear me. If I turn that off, it doesn't. All right. Um, anyway, that's enough of that. So that's that's how you get B1. I'm not going to get too deep into um, into how to use. Um, voice meter just to tell you that it's excellent and it really makes um, makes this all possible. So getting it out of the way, so you have a simple scene with this just B1. All right, so your B1 input, I'm going to drill down to this. It's the voice meter output VB audio uh, voice meter VIO. That's the actual um, going out to stream source. All right, so there you go. That's B1. Then um, you have the overlay dash audio track which is all of, um, well, it's the audio right here, and all of your graphics. Now, title text um, if you're needing it, but let's just go through these things. When they, when they become visible, all right, there they are. Any one of them, they're all invisible at start, right? So all we're doing is making these vis visible. All right, so... Why? Why do we do this? Um, well, like like I showed you before, by having an overlay audio video, let's go back to, we're going to switch over to, well, here, let's just do it this way, DCS Hero. All right, you'll notice that this scene is basically just DCS, but above it, taking precedence, is the overlay audio. So anything happening on the overlay audio or anything being heard will come out on this scene. Here's Spock. Same thing, overlay audio. All right, different um, different source because it's coming from a different place. Lenny, um, same overlay audio, right? So you see every single scene that's in the show has overlay, um, the overlay layer. Now there there may be times where you don't want it. For example, if you go to um, the uh, stream starting soon stuff, you know, just this. It's just a music um, track. Right. 
uh, and, a, and, a, and an image. And it's just, but now you notice there's no overlay audio layer, no B1, no nothing. So nothing's coming through the stream. All right. And then we have, we increase the clutter as the show moves on. So here's that um, stream starting soon with clutter. All right. Now, <clears throat> what you're seeing in this scene is the same stuff, but we put the B1 track in here, um, but no overlay track, right? And then um, the image, um, Thunderama block, which is just a color source that's high up here. And then the, um, the stack overlay, um, the stack no overlay layer, which is just this, okay? This is just visual stuff, again, no overlay, with all of the um, nameplates for each pilot and then their feeds just placed in here. Um, a couple little graphics thing. The iPad, which is um, usually showing up in my left. Um, it's mounted. It's not mounted right now, nor is it turned on. Um, the monitor scene, shooter's feed, and then um, another color source thing. I gotta lock that. Okay, so anyway, um, <clears throat> so that clutter scene like this, and then when the show started, um, is basically Thunderbird's check. We go to the Thunderama clutter. <laughs> and then we, then we fade to full. Jeez, that's loud. Okay, so that's just, I don't know what you might have heard then, but it's loud. So that's how we start the show. So you're seeing all this stuff going on um, in the background. And on, to be perfectly honest, the reason we did it that way um, after some, you know, debate about it, um, was to show the audience, you know, hey, look, this is all, you know, all the feeds. Because in this clutter scene, you see every single thing that I see, okay? Because you have the main monitors here, and then, in essence, the POV monitors here with Shooter, and then the cave uh, cam there, and then all of the other basic camera sets. All right, so it's all visible. So that deck really kind of covers um, the general setup of the scene and, and how it works. Um, back to the main. <coughs> all right, so now the next thing maybe to talk about is the actual camera setup and why it is the way it is. So, okay, let's go to the main scene, uh, the main camera setup here. Again, we were talking about um, the main cameras, which is uh, main, Spock, Lenny, uh, five six, which is not a main camera, but it's taking two of the feeds. Raj is a main machine. Six five is just a split screen. Again, five one, six one, and then one left, one and six. All right, so um, that kind of just gives you those are the main looks, and of course the drone. Our good friend, Mr. Drone. All right, now. Um, you're also now, if you're looking at the, there's specialty, lots of specialty icons that will be, or scenes rather, that are reused in all different contexts throughout. For example, the trio. All right, now, if you look at the scene, all right, up here, you actually look at the icon. Now, any of those types of scenes, you see that main is always kind of in gray. All right, and it says trio, and it's showing me five and six. All right, just their numbers. Well, this is, main means it's pretty much locked on the boss the whole time, and then five, and then six. So this, by, by doing this, the trio view, um, you're seeing main five and six. Now, if you look at one that's very similar, we're just gonna go right across the bottom here to um, main, but five, six POVs. All right, so it's basically the same scene as Trio, right? But the bottom views are POVs of five and six. All right, that's what's happening there. All right, now we'll just, to keep it going, we're gonna move, and of course their feeds aren't live, so they're just blank. So now if we go straight up, oh, they're, by the way, the reason uh, five and six are in blue is because it's blue flight. All right, so now two and three are, um, are red flight, and so we're gonna go up to theirs. It's very much the same is main five and six. Oh, I made a mistake. I beg your pardon. Um, no, I, yeah, I guess I, I, I must have changed. I beg your pardon. I made a mistake. The, yeah, that's my mistake. The uh, main five and six, that's actually, that icon's wrong. 
<laughs> I apologize. Um, uh, just days before the show, I changed it so um, the this view this should be a, a, a blue five up here because it actually is looking at five. So when I'm in this view, it looks at five, and the reason it was changed is because I realized I could use it later in the show for. Um, for things where we're really just looking at solo stuff, like may maybe solo rejoin on the Delta, um, um, setting up for the Calypso, things like that. So I'm just, you're seeing five on the top screen. So that icon is wrong because it was changed very late in the, in the game. So sorry about that. So main, f uh, main two and three, so top camera's pointed at main, which is boss, and then two and three is POV. So you see the little POV marker here. And then of course we have the quads. <coughs> Um, and the quads are, the quad view, there's two different quad views. There's a quad 5.6 and a quad 6.5 because it depends. Generally, this is used for opposing maneuvers, although we do use it on takeoff because the solos are taking off together and uh, five's doing a roto and uh, roll on takeoff. And um, six is doing her uh, split S on takeoff. So the only way to capture that is to show you basically four views at once, which is their their helmet cams and what their jets are doing individually. So we we use uh, quad five six for takeoff, and then we use it for the uh, opposing knife edge first half. And after the hit, obviously we switch sides because so, five's going off to the right, six is going off to the left. So those are the different views. So if we, um, I'm just going to run into this page for a second, and that's the difference between quad five six, quad six five. All right. So, um, all right. So then, other P. And you'll see now. Anytime there's a P and P, let's go to another one. All right. There's always it's always P and P in the corner. All right. P and P, um, and you'll see that one says Raj and Main. So that means Main is here, and this is Raj. So this is the view from uh, my flying rig, which is Raj, and. Um, whatever it's looking at. So it might be a show center view, it might be an F2, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, it is. Um, P and P for two and main. All right, so main is the full screen. And P and P for three, all right, um, which is the same thing but with three. And then it goes right down for the other POV is five and six. You'll see how they go down if you're looking at the stream deck on the right, up and down. All right, all right same thing for POVs. This is just pure um, feed from Dano, uh, pure feed from Bingo, pure feed from Tej, pure feed from Six. All right, um, upper right, and then the this one is used for the low BB for the five card loop, and any other time, frankly, that I want to show two, three, and sixes uh, POVs because there's a couple times during the show where it's useful to show those POVs while I'm showing main. Now, if you notice the difference below that now, whereas um, we have the PNP uh, main 5, um, then his, I can go right across to his thing, but you see 5 and 6 have a special, an, a, their own uh, specific helmet cam and main cam. So this is a PNP 5.5 five, and this is a PNP 6.6. Six. Alright, I hope that makes, well I should say PNP POV 5, lock 5, and a PNP POV six lock six, so that's what um, we're using for when I want to look at, for example, this uh, this one, these two scenes here, which is PNP POV six lock boss, PNP POV six lock six. These two are back and forth for the line break loop where they're making the heart in the sky. Right, I'm just going back and forth between these two. All right, so <clears throat> that covers the uh, the general camera setup, and that's how it, that is laid out. Now, the um, the other thing to show is now the only other time that I leave this page is I have solo hit pages. So you see up there, solo OKE. So if I go into there. Uh, solo OK. What you'll notice is I'm in a new page, and this is where if you're not familiar with Stream Deck, I mean Stream Deck is, I mean there's there can't I can't imagine anything better for streaming, um, especially a compl complicated, uh, fast moving stream. So when I'm in the opposing knife edge, 
All right, I, I'll just hit that page. It's like this. I hit the page, all right, and then I fire the graphic, which is also on my other stream deck. I can fire it from here, too. And then I go to my first scene, which is Tej flying is his external lock. Then I go to his cockpit, which is blank right now. Then I go to Lenny's, uh, which is Panther's jet. Then I go to her cockpit. Then I go to the first quad. Five from the left, six from the right. And then when just when they're getting ready to hit show center, I have to make sure that... Um, the scene, or the uh, this is fill SC, which basically overwrites the two bottom. All right, so if I, I have to go to that machine real quick and just show you, there you go. All right, so that's um, if I'm on the wrong view, if I'm on the F4 view, four or four, which I've done, I've made this mistake. That's what you get, and it's really dumb. So. So in order to mitigate that, I need to be in F11 view because you're looking at show center here. I'm going to run over to the other um, camera, excuse me, the other stream deck real quick and show you what it says on the OKE, all right, um, when it's not hot. Let me turn that graphic off. Okay, so as I'm coming over, we had just we just did the um, BTR. And you see where it says comms there? That's reminding me, comms go hot, so I hit the team speak active. Um, I bring it up on the mixing board. All right, but then when I go to OKE, you see right below it, it says Raj F11. So if I I remember, I remember, see that and I go, right. So I'll reach over to my left and hit F11 on, let me go back to that view, because normally until this point, I would be in the F4 view looking at like fours back. So when I see OKE um, Raj F11, I go into that page, let me show you exactly what I do here. Um, and I'm assuming if you're watching this, you're interested in how this is done, so I'm not too worried about being brief. All right, so I see OKE Raj F11. I hit the page, all right, and then I hit F11 on Raj, which is keyboard just to the left of that. So now I'm set up. I hit the graphic. I go to Spock or Tej, um, POV5. Go to Panther's Jet. Uh, which is Lenny, her POV. Then I go to the quad view, 5, 6. When they hit, it's you know ready. Hit it, hit the fill, and quad. Now, I do have two um, two keyboards here, or two little keypads. I have a keypad for every machine right in front of me. So I can zoom, um, and, and I can lock if I lose them. I can do very basic things from here. And then once they're once they're at, they're going up into their flip turns, I always go to I try to always go to a wide uh, screen like this. Um, so you're just seeing the two jets flying away from each other. And the reason I do that is because, for example, the next maneuver that comes up, you're going to have uh, shooters going to be talking. So I'm going to bring um, I'm going to well, let me come out of there. Um, shooter would be talking for the next maneuver. So you can just see the circle on the bottom right, and so he's going to be back on screen with as few things on screen as possible. So from here, the next maneuver would be the the, uh, the um, TD bop, trail to diamond, uh, bottom up pass. So the shot I'm going to go to for that one is going to be this, which is main and then the P, uh, P and P with POV 3, because 3 is pulling into trail. So I can show you just as minimal scenes to tell you what's going on, which would be where you're seeing the trail come in, you're seeing 3's POV view because 4 now is just show center. I can't get back to that. There's no time. So I can't get another external view of 4 for the rest of the show. It's finished. You only see that until the first um, opposing hit and, it's, and you'll never see it again. Unfortunately. For the moment. You know, we'll see when 2.0 happens. So anyway, the... Um, you know, shooter's talking, and then I'm going to bring in the um, the graphic. His, then I pop him out of the scene, and then just as they go diamond ready now, boom! I go to that. That way, you, you get to see the uh, the main view of the diamond changing, um, and of, of course, you, you see the wingmen. All right, so that's um that's it. So that 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 gives you an idea of how we're picking these views. And then we'll go to like the next solo hit, um, which is the opposing inverted, which starts with six now, and then gets to gets to five on the other side. Um, and then the last page that's worth talking about is a little bit more complicated than the other two, which is now <coughs> 
This is the op opposing split S, which happens right before the high bomb burst. Um, after the delta burst, then the rejoin. Um, excuse me. After the delta burst, the solos um, go out to their baskets, and that's what what goes here. So for this, um, what what um, eight would be doing is he'd be saying, now, "Now let's go in the cockpits." Once again, we'll go back in the cockpit. Um, now the that's why this page is this way. This, if I go com B1, um, what I'm doing here is I'm just sending um, the TeamSpeak um, channel live on B1. All right, so that's the first thing that happens, then this happens, which is the graphic, and then I go to Spock, point of view, um, Panther Lenny, point of view, and then the quad for the 6.5 coming in, and then the first hit. And then, once they fly out back from the first hit, it stays on the quad all the way up through their split S, and then hit two, then their outbound quad, and then the 6-5 view. Again, we're only seeing the jets with nothing else, all right? because the next scene you're going to see, and then I'm supposed to do this, turn it back off, the com off, before I leave the page, and I can turn the graphic off too from here before I leave the page, because the next scene you're going to see is the high bomber so I'm back at boss. So that more or less is how this is done. <laughs> so um, I, I hope this I hope this is useful, you know, because um, now I, I should say this before I get into it. Um, yeah, I'm running I am running five DCS machines and a machine that's doing nothing else but capturing the uh, sound booth that's coming from the narrator. He's running the music and he's sending me a, a feed and all that stuff. Um, so that all that technical stuff. Um, so it's basically six computers in in this um, in this room in my my cave here. Now the the thing is, you don't need six to do this. You can you you can have your friends do this with you. Um, they can be sending you feeds. All there's really nothing. All they have to do is have a DCS machine and a you know relatively decent internet connection, and that's a whole separate thing. I'll probably just talk about it at the end of the video. Um, the the general ways I would say that you would um, that you would how could I put this um, capture is you know obviously directly the game right on the scene on the screen, which is that particular one's just DCS, or you could use capture cards, which I think at this point, for this type of thing, they're obsolete. They're not very effective. Um, th honestly, the video quality is not very good, um, and they do tend to drop offline. They, you can only use one on any um, USB bus because of the bandwidth required. Um, so th they have their problems. Then, of course, there's something called uh, NewTek NDI, which is a network-based capture. But it's um, it's very heavy. It's about 33 megabits worth of um, data moving on your network. So if you have three NDI sources on your network and you have 100 megabit um, cards, you're you've saturated your network. A fourth one will put it over the top and it will be useless. Um, and then there's one more thing: some external browser source, which is what we'll talk about um, maybe in, in maybe another video. Because um, it's really not all as relevant. All I could say is, if you use one, they do exist where there um, there's no latency at all, and you they're very configurable as far as how much bit rate um, they're pushing and how much you're pulling in. Um, so we are using one with which is why you're able to see the live narrator and the live helmet cams because there's no delay. They're all, um, if there's a delay, it's a millisecond, uh, you know, there is an acceptable delay for what we're doing. Um, so that's, uh, that's it. So let's, let's get into the show and, um, we're going to run a recording of the stream deck. At least I'm going to try to, I, boy, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but we're going to give it our best try. Fox, you can go live when you want. Okay, we're live right now. Do you have it? Just some checking. Okay, we got the feed. Uh, it's both. 
Okay, great, thanks. So just uh, keep me updated when you guys are ready, and I will give you a countdown. I have, uh, just to let you know, I have a huge delay on your team speak. I don't know if it's my ping or whatever, but uh, I hope the counter will work properly. One's ready. Two's ready. Three's ready. Four's ready. Five's ready. It's ready. Okay, we are launching the intro in one minute. And I will give you the countdown. Copy one minute, uh, boss seven, comms are sterile. Down, starting now. Twenty. Seven, six, five. Thunderbirds, check. Three, four, five, six. Start one, ready now. Genevieve's down, ready now. Throttle idle ready now. We are the warriors of the 21st century. A noble symbol of freedom and a tireless pursuit of excellence. An everlasting legacy of pride, precision, and professionalism. Of all airmen of the United States Air Force. By sec, sec on ready now. Since 1953, we have demonstrated the most advanced and respected air power in the world. The pinnacle of teamwork and dedication off, ready of the world's now. most elite force in air, test, space, test on and ready cyberspace. Now. We are first, last, and Set always a fighter so. squadron. Our maintenance professionals can transform our jets to be combat ready in 72 hours. To provide the protection under which our democracy operates. Today, you will witness the unparalleled teamwork, aerial precision, and raw power employed in combat.
almost unbelievable attention to detail demands the ultimate commitment from the whole squadron to achieve their best. At 500 miles per hour and formations 18 Stand inches by. apart, Force. Force and at times only 150 feet off the ground, Speed the sound of freedom down. is not just heard, Stand but you. felt. On ready now. Our lineage of military One, jets two, and frontline three, fighters release, have four, always release, proudly five, displayed release. our colors. Red ready for down. courage. White for truth. Two, release, Blue three, for release, justice. Four, release, five, Distinguished go. names that echo down the halls of ready aviation down. history. Thunderjet. Number one's clear taxi, runway two two. Super right turn up, Saber. go echelon. Go echelon. Thunder Chief. Phantom, Talon, and today's F-16 Fighting Falcon. In the spirit of its namesake, the F-16 can soar to 50,000 feet. Climbing 30,000 feet per minute, it is capable of Mach 2 or 1,500 miles per hour and maneuvers at nine times the force of gravity. From our fabled past to today's ambassadors in blue, we seek to be the best of the best in our critical mission. Recruit, retain, and inspire the long blue line of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. We are the premier air demonstration squadron of the United States Air Force. We are 130 of the finest airmen together to yep. exhibit Three, the capability four, and uncontested air dominance to get of runway the four United four States two Air Force. Two four two. Anywhere, Anywhere we take up for the right hand turn. Anytime. Hey. We are take it up for the high show. Now two, three, four, five, seven. Thunder, thunder, roll. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jason Shooter Anderson, Thunderbird 8, the team's advanced pilot and narrator from Abilene, Texas. Today, we will give you a chance to witness the Thunderbird mission, a demonstration of the teamwork, dedication, and professionalism that mirrors that of your Air Force active duty, guard, and reserve personnel deployed around the globe. Right now, the pilots are taxing to the end of the runway to complete some pre-flight checks. And once they are ready, they'll take to the skies. Soon you'll hear Thunderbird 1 command the pilots to four run up their engines as they accelerate down the runway from your left to your right. Two and five. As the planes lift off and begin their climb, watch Check our G slot pilot Warwolf. He'll move quickly from the right wing into the slot late. position to form the famous Thunderbird Diamond. Thunderbird 1 will then demonstrate the superior thrust to weight ratio of the F-16 by immediately pulling the noses up into the vertical, performing the Diamond Wow, 7, you're clear for takeoff runway 2-2. It's a beautiful day to fly. Five and six. Step with the retrain. In formation, Panther will immediately pull 60 degrees into the vertical and perform a split. Waiting for eight, stand by for three. Reversing her direction while still over the runway. This is all while Tej executes an immediate 360 degree aileron roll at low altitude. Stand by for the retran in five, four, three, two. Thunderbird 1's clear for takeoff runway 22. Today we fly for our international family, who's given us this time to demonstrate the pride and precision found in today's United States Air Force. Since 2004, this team has inspired countless spectators both at home and abroad, just as our real-life counterparts have since 1953. This could not have been possible without you. For the strong bonds between all of our countries, for our military servicemen and women here at home, for our deployed loved ones who work tirelessly to make this world a better place, Thunderbirds, let's run them up!
Stand by smoke. Smoke on our need now. Smoke off our need now. Thunderbirds, at least need now. Burners now! Now, Virtual Air Festival, Stand Tall as America's Ambassadors in Blue, open with a tribute to our good friends here at VIAF, America's own, your 2022 Virtual United States Air Force Air Demonstration Squadron, known to all the world as the Thunderbirds. In 1954, the first solo pilot made their debut on the Thunderbirds, and in 1962, the opposing solo was added. Now, check six and welcome our current solo pilots, Thunderbirds 5, Tom Teach Cop, and Thunderbirds 6, Stephanie Panther Lessentine, as they approach from behind and overhead to execute the ever-inspiring Cross Over Break. Thunderbird fans, have your cameras ready for a picture of formation flying at its finest as the diamond is approaching from the right at a mere 18 inches apart for your 2022 Diamond Pass in Review. Now, 
Watch from your left as Thunderbird 6 displays the historic Thunderbird emblem on the bottom of her aircraft with the knife edge pass. The original Thunderbird Diamond was led by Major Dick Catledge with twin captains Buck and Bill Patillo as wingmen and Captain Kanaga as the slot pilot. Now, look in front and to your left as the current virtual Thunderbird Diamond maintains precise formation position in the Diamond Roll.